Hello there and welcome to another video. It is Wednesday today and we're just going to be talking about a couple of things that come to my mind during this video and it's going to be all Liverpool related as well. A lot of positives, maybe a, a talking point that I'm not entirely greatly happy about but we can discuss it and hopefully turn it into a positive anyway. Now, get your thoughts and comments in the comment section below about anything that is discussed in this video or also feel free to make any points that you would like to. Now, if you can see a little shadow that's moving around here behind my curtain, it's my cat. She's just deciding to have a good look out the window. And why not? Because it's not too bad of a day today. And I certainly hope that you yourselves are having a pretty good day, regardless of what you're doing, whether you're at work, at home, whatever is happening. Hope that you're taking care of yourselves as well and looking after yourselves and those around you, if you can. Now, let's dive straight in. Because at the moment... Let's just think even a couple of weeks back and we're looking and we're seeing Everton at the top of the table. Things aren't looking great. We've, we, you know, we've been absolutely slapped up by Aston Villa. You know, things weren't looking great. We've lost Virgil van Dijk. We drew in the Merseyside derby and we should have won and stuff like that. But now we look where we are right now. We've seen Nat Phillips come in and have a very, very good performance for us in the Premier League. We've seen Reese Williams come in. Um, and be absolutely brilliant as well. Absolutely fantastic. We're seeing some good rotation be able to happen. We've lost Fabinho as well. You know, Thiago still hasn't been able to play yet. We've got a lot of <laughs> we've got a lot of injuries. Let's be fair. Got a lot of things going on. A lot of people still left to come back. We've obviously been missing Joel Matip as well. Naby Keita hasn't been available. Been a lot of unavailability for Liverpool. And where do we find ourselves? At this moment in time, on Wednesday, at the time, which is now just gone past 3pm in the UK, we find ourselves top of the Premier League by a good, I think, two points at the very least, if not a little bit more. Our goal difference is starting to improve a little bit. It's plus two now. Um, so I think we're not doing too badly. Not too badly at all, in my opinion. Champions League. Played three games. Three clean sheets, three wins, nine points from nine. Obviously, last night we were playing against Atalanta. We won 5-0 and it was very, very comprehensive. Things are starting to look really, really positive for Liverpool. We're going to start getting some, you know, some injuries uh, back into the team. We're going to start getting these guys back. Fabinho looks like he's going to be able to come back um, after the international break. He's not being called up by Brazil. Alisson has come back from injury and he looks absolutely magnificent. Like, as good as we were attacking-wise against Atalanta, the saves that Alisson had to make were absolutely phenomenal. Really, really great. Really impressive. And he looks really, really good at the moment. You know, I know he's, he's had a haircut. He's trimmed his beard back up and stuff like that as well. Maybe he's getting that first season power back where he was absolutely incredible he's been brilliant for us since he signed but he just looks a little bit sharper looks a little bit just more of a brick wall than than usual and i'm all i'm all about it i'm all about it and we faced man city this weekend and listen we're going to be doing a preview about that as well we're going to do it nearer the game as well because that's what i like to do I, I don't want to do a preview right now i want to do a preview that's a little bit closer to the game when we can maybe get a bit of a picture of who they're going to have avail available who we're going to have available um, ready for that game and then after that it's internationals which basically means we can just go into hibernation for a couple of weeks and then wake up when the Premier League comes back because I'm not about international football I'm really not maybe a couple of games I might watch but just not about that life not about the international football life so um, I'll just be waiting in bated breath for the Premier League and the Champions League to kick back into gear so as I said things are starting to look really really positive for Liverpool like really really picking things back up normality over the last couple of seasons is starting to look really really good where you know we're looking getting some good results top of the table top of our group in the champions league now we're seeing the emergence um the very real emergence of diogo jota as well and this is going to be one of the points that i come to which also has a little bit of a negative uh, a negative vibe to it as well not from me but how i want to turn that negative into a bit more of a positive or sp not spin it but let's have a look at the, the positives that we've got here as well. So, obviously, Diogo Jota, since he's come in, has been absolutely outstanding. Every single game that he's featured in, either as a substitute or starting, 
He looks phenomenal. I think he's played 10 games for Liverpool, scored seven goals. He's looking like a very real... He looks like the very, very real threat to the established front three. I see that as a good thing. And I see it as a good thing because it looked like such an insurmountable thing to have someone be able to come in and be competitive for the front three. For those of you that don't know, and if you don't know, wow, Firmino, Mane and Salah, that's the front three. That's the established order of the front three of Liverpool. For like the last two years, if you're doing starting 11 predictions, you barely even have to do a front three prediction because you knew it was going to be those guys. Now we've got the likes of Shakiri, we've got the likes of Minamino that can supplement. But Diogo Jota looks like the first very real threat of being able to take away the established order of the front three and insert himself into it. And I think that's great because I think it creates competition within those guys. And I think for someone like Firmino, he's such a unique player that it was always he he's always been viewed as and still is in my opinion impossible to replace in a starting 11 for the work rate that he brings to a team the link up play the dropping so deep and dropping into midfield and helping people create helping people you know move that ball forward um just everything that Firmino does that isn't summed up in goals and assists so so difficult to replicate so what Jota does instead is he just bangs them in. <laughs> and and it is unfortunately for Firmino right now, that's what people are looking for. That's what we're that's what we were needing. We're needing to refresh up a little bit, get a little bit more excitement into that front three. Because let's make no mistake, right now, as we speak right now, yes, Firmino's goals and assists have dried up a little bit, but his work rate is still there for the team. However, what Jota seems to have done is ignite that front three again and make us look sharper and sharper in front of goal. He's also quite clinical himself. Like He is very, very good at being in front of goal. He is also very, very good at linking up with the front three himself. And I think it's great because I think this is going to push Bobby Firmino to, you know, not that his effort levels have dropped a great deal or if, if at all, but it's going to push him to be like, yo, my starting place is now actively under threat. I need to get myself back in there. I need to make sure that either I keep my starting place or if I do lose it, that I can come back in, make a good impact on the team and be pro proactively involved with Liverpool moving forward. Because make no mistake, Bobby Firmino over the last God knows how many seasons he's been here now and it feels like he's been here forever I'm pretty sure he was a Rodgers signing as well. I'm pretty sure he was. Uh, he played in a, in a slightly different in a slightly different role um, when he first came to Liverpool. But he's adapted to everything that's been thrown at him. Every set of players that he's played with, he's adapted very, very well. He's a very important key cog of us becoming Champions League winners. Hell, even getting in the Champions League in the first place. Being able to call ourselves Premier League winners as well and be as competitive as we've been in both of those competitions, at least over the last couple of seasons. But the progress that we've made under Jurgen Klopp, it doesn't happen without Bobby Firmino. Now, what I didn't like last night, and this has got absolutely nothing to do with the team, was the social media reaction. When we'd see something so, so positive, like a Diogo Jota comes on, I think it's his first Champions League start for Liverpool, at least. Um, I know he's played in the Champions League before with another team, and I cannot remember the name of the team. It's literally gone out of my head. Um, but for Liverpool, at least, comes on, you know, he starts the game, he scores a hat-trick. That's nothing to be sniffed at. And against Atalanta as well, who I felt was the other very, very dangerous team in our group, aside from us, ourselves, he had a fantastic performance. And it's quite sad a little bit that quite a few fans seem to take that as Bobby Firmino is now finished, you know, and social media, football followings and stuff like that. They seem to have these, you know, Firmino's finished, every, someone's finished or they're done out here and stuff like that. And it's like Firmino's not finished at all. Firmino is not finished whatsoever. 
I just don't like that some of some people's instant reaction is to just, you know, take a Bobby Firmino, scrumple him up and put him in the bin. It's like, that's so disrespectful. Bobby Firmino's still got so much to off offer Liverpool. Like, you cannot just turn around and say, oh, yeah, here's, 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 the, here's this new thing, um, this older thing that we've already had for a couple of years. It's time to get rid of. We should sell him. We should get rid of him. Whatever. Bin him off. No, 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 no. You put... Like, I, I would hate... I would really hate to sell or get rid of a Bobby Firmino, and I'm not even entertaining that in my mind. How good is it that when you could look at our bench last night and you go, oh, right, so Diogo Jota, um, Mane and Salah, they're starting. Wow, Firmino's on the bench. That, I, I felt great. I thought that, oh, man, our bench looks so strong. Flip it the other way. Firmino starts, Diogo Jota's on the bench. Shakiri, Minamino. For me, I look at all this and I think, that this is what we've been crying out for, is strength in depth. But now people want to get rid of it. Just because, okay, and this is nothing against Diogo Jota, Great performance, scored a hat-trick, unbelievable. Been brilliant since he's come in. But you don't just go, right, that's cool, he's awesome, let's get rid of these guys. No, we need this strength. We need that experience, that winning experience mentality that comes with a Bobby Firmino and the experience he's had. We need that. We need that badly. Because we're not... While losing Van Dijk this season to injury is awful... If we ever lost something up front as well, and people would just be too quick to jump on, okay, wait, we can get rid of Firmino, we don't need him anymore. Imagine if something else happened in the attacking lines. Someone gets injured up there, and I'm certainly not wishing that anyone does, obviously, because um, I'm not wired that way. People jump in far too quickly, in my opinion, of the whole... And I, I say this, I think that this is quite clearly just a minority as well. Um, that are jumping on the whole, like, oh, Bobby Firmino's finished, he's done out here and all this sort of business. I do think it's a minority. I don't think it's the majority. I think a lot of a lot of Liverpool fans, if not the vast majority, look at him like I do and think, this is going to be great for Firmino. It's going to give him a challenge. It's going to give him something that's going to maybe make him step himself up, get himself that little bit sharper, maybe make him a bit more dangerous in front of goal. Maybe. You know what else it does, though? It also gives us different options, different way of attacking teams. And it makes us all the more, that little bit more unpredictable. Just when maybe people think that they have all the answers about us, we start changing the questions. To quote Rowdy Roddy Piper. <laughs> but no, honestly, like people start to figure us out a little bit here and then all of a sudden, bang, we throw in some curveballs. I just think that it's it was it was a little bit sad to see that reaction after such... A positive result, a massive result, where we looked literally like the very best addition of Liverpool that we've been over the last couple of years. We looked like that last night against Atalanta in every shape. Seeing Reese Williams be absolutely magnificent in defence, seeing Curtis Jones be a good creator, a brilliant midfielder last night alongside Henderson and Jeannie Wijnaldum, seeing that happen... And then seeing Diogo Jota take his chances like he did. The whole team performance as a unit was fantastic. And I just didn't like that reaction. So maybe I've talked like for like 10 minutes or something about the my impassioned defence of Bobby Firmino. But I will defend our players until they are indefensible. Absolutely, 100% I will. I believe in our players. I love our players, each and every single one of them. Whether they're in form or they're out of form. They're our players. I will back them to the hilt. I will back them as far as I can. And I'll never stop doing so. I think we need to not only appreciate what we have, but love it as well. Because we wouldn't be where we are without players like Bobby Firmino. Jota could be the evolution or the start of the evolution of the front three. Eventually, he's 23. A lot of these guys are 27, 28. Maybe he is going to be viewed as one of the starting people as the evolution will start to happen for the front three. Maybe as the ageing gets on their side, maybe the club might actually see um, sell-on value for some of these players. If and hey, if that happens, it starts to happen. But we, we cross that bridge as we come to it. But we don't dive off the cliff before we need to. Let's not start selling these players in our minds before we're ever done with them.
that's not we should what we should be about. Let's not wish away stuff. You know, before we before we're definitely done with them. Let's let's have them like their moments like a Daniel Sturridge where you definitely know he's only going to contribute little little bits here or there for like maybe a remaining season. After that, he's going to have to move on. That's what the natural order should be in my opinion anyway. Let me know what you think in the comments below about all of these things here. Thank you ever so much for watching this video. If you have enjoyed it, please do like it and subscribe if you're new around here. Be getting the Man City preview done at some point this week. I will make sure to do that before the weekend. But for now, I'm going to get out of here. Do take care. I'll catch you later.